Praise the Lord. We're continuing on today in 1 John, the second chapter. Good news here that we have of the kingdom of God and the beautiful working of the Spirit of the Lord. It opens our eyes, causes us to walk in the light, not in the darkness. John, writing to encourage the church here, says in the seventh verse, Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Boy, some of these scriptures, like Peter said of Paul, it seems the apostles can write things that are hard to be understood. Almost sounds as though John is jumping back and forth in what he's saying. One moment he says, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, that which you've heard from the beginning. And then he turns around and says, but on the other hand, and that's actually what the Phillips translation says, if you read it out of that, a new commandment I do give to you. Well, is he talking about an old commandment or a new commandment? Well, I can tell you according to the scripture, he's telling you the same thing. Uh, we can read back in the law that you were told to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind, and you were told to love your neighbor as yourself. And that was the same commandment that Jesus spoke that was the fulfillment of all the other commandments. Well, what changed it between the new covenant and the old covenant? Because it was the same word. However, under the old commandment or under the old covenant, it was old. It had no power. Why? Paul understood that and speaks about it over in Romans. The commandment is good and holy. We find nothing wrong with the law of Moses. The problem was sin in the flesh. The flesh is weak to keep the law. And what the law of Moses ended up accomplishing was proving that all flesh is unable to keep the law. Well, I'm amazed that today, 2,000 years after Christ has come and after the new covenant that was received after Calvary and the Holy Spirit was given, Jesus filled the apostles and his followers with his very life and his very nature so that they might walk not after the letter of the law, which Paul came to the understanding that it actually brought destruction, it killed, said the letter kills, but the spirit of that same word makes you alive. Well, what's the difference? What does that mean? There was a glory of that old covenant, and it was so glorious that when Moses went up to the mountain to receive the commandments of God, when he came down, and of course he was there 40 days, what a glory. The man neither ate nor drank for 40 days when he was in the mount with God. But he received the very word of God in the presence of Almighty God. And the spirit and life of God sustained Moses in such a way that not only did he not come down from the mountain weak and dragging because he hadn't been eating and drinking for 40 days, but he was enlightened he was made alive, so much so that his face act, actually shined with the glory of God and it terrified the people because his, his face shined like a light bulb. So he had to put a veil over his face. But the scripture says, really, in reality, he wasn't just putting a veil over his face because they were scared, but he was putting, over a, a, he was putting a veil over his face because the glory of that covenant faded. It was a fading glory. Initially, he would be shining. But the longer that he stood before the people and the longer that he walked around outside of the presence of God, that glory would fade. Well, that was the glory of the law. You could receive that word and all oh, you could be excited because that old word, it was new when you received it. And you, and you could say in yourself, I'm going to love the Lord my God with all my heart and I'm going to love my neighbor as myself and you're going to get determined I'm going to do this and I'm going to please my God and then pretty soon that old nature was you found was incapable 
to keep that law and the glory of that law faded away. There was no glory found in it, according to the flesh, because the flesh couldn't keep it. The spirit was willing, but the flesh was weak. Well, Jesus came and superseded that covenant, and that's what Mo, that's what Paul said. He says over in 2 Corinthians 3, Having then, and this is the 12th verse, having then such hope, we use much freedom of speech. Now this is the Young's literal translation, straight out of the Greek. And are not as Moses, who was putting a veil upon his face, for the sons of Israel, not steadfastly to look to the end of that which is being made useless. What was being made useless? That old covenant, that old commandment was being made useless. That's why he put a veil over his face. But their minds were hardened. For unto this day, the same veil at the reading of the old covenant doth remain unwithdrawn which in Christ is being made useless. But till today, when Moses is read, a veil upon their heart doth lie. And whenever they may turn unto the Lord, the veil is taken away. And the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we all with unveiled face, the glory of the Lord beholding in a mirror, to the same image are being transformed from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. In other words, that commandment, according to the law, under the old covenant, as glorious as that commandment was, and no doubt that it was true, it was the very law of God, it was the covenant of God. Flesh could not attain unto it. And that glory was a fading glory. And it was to fade completely away at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ that that which is far exceeding in glory, that which was to remain, might show and far exceed the glory of the former. And that which is old becomes new. Not that the commandment changes, the commandment stays the same. How does it become greater? Because rather now than it being an external word that's heard through the natural ears and looked at by the natural eyes, and you say, do this and you'll live, instead now it becomes by the Spirit, which enters into the heart of a man through faith, by grace, receiving the good word of the Lord Jesus Christ, not a word where you're going to try to attain unto that word by your works and by your effort, but a word which you say, I believe according to the faith that I've received by the grace of Christ Jesus, I believe. And that new nature begins to spring up in your heart and you begin to live by the power of that word, not trying to attain that word according to the works of your flesh, which always is how it works out here in the world according to the covenants of men. That's why it was given to men to prove to all humanity, sons, daughters, you're not going to keep this law by external commandments. You're not going to fulfill this and please me. There's only one way you're going to please me. You're going to let me do it in you. I'm going to become the living word in your heart. And out of that new nature, you will fulfill my word. Praise God. So it's a living word. And when the spirit, when you turn to the Lord and understand that this comes from him, that it's completely his doing in your life, there's nothing you can achieve by your own merit, by your own abilities. Then the grace of the Lord begins to work and the veil is taken away. And that which is old becomes brand new. And that's why John could say, this is, I'm speaking to you, not something that's new, but something that's old. A commandment that you've heard from the very beginning. And then he says again, a new commandment I write to you, which is true in him. Because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. And then he says in the ninth verse, he who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in the darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness 
has blinded his eyes. Well, uh, Jesus spoke about this and he understood that that law, he was going to completely fulfill that law. Jesus was. He was the only one that could fulfill it. He was the only one that could walk it out in the flesh. But then he didn't even allow them to make him a king on that level, though he was very much able to fulfill every word of the law of the covenant of Moses, and he did fulfill it to the very T. He, he fulfilled it, not according to the letter, but according to the Spirit. He brought in, with his coming, he brought in a new covenant, and yet even as a man in his flesh, he didn't allow them to make him king on that fleshly order. But he died to bring in a completely new order. Letting there be no availability for glory of a man in the flesh. Which is why when they came to Jesus and they said, Good man, good master, what do I need to do to enter into eternal life? Jesus said, why do you call me good? There's none good but God. He was going to remove it from the plane of flesh so that it would be impossible for any flesh to glory in his sight, which is why today he will never allow, the Lord will never allow us to take these doctrines that are pure in the spirit and bring them down to natural carnal flesh and organize them and make doctrines and, and build kingdoms according to men where we can control people, where we can build a hierarchy here in the earth. The kingdom of God will never come as the kingdoms of men. It will never be set up as the governments of men. It is in opposition to the governments of men. There is no ability for flesh to get a hold of these things according to the outward commandments. You cannot teach the doctrines of the Lord. You know, we make these videos and we're and 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 many there's many brothers and sisters that I'm in fellowship with that write. As a matter of fact, we go back to the scriptures and the apostles and, and Paul the apostle especially who wrote the majority of the New Testament, he wrote so-called commandments and he uh gave explanation in a way of what the spirit was speaking to his heart but he was not expecting to anybody to go out and try to fulfill what he was writing down in his letters according to the flesh he would say again and again echoing the words of the lord jesus the flesh doesn't profit you anything if you try to organize these according to your natural intellect and work them out according to your flesh, you're right back under the law. The veil of that law has covered your face again. It doesn't matter if you read the New Testament or the Old Testament. If, you, if you're trying to order your life according to God's word after the flesh, trying to do it as you would learn how to any skill out here or anything science it doesn't matter what it is anything that you learn out here according to men's laws and then try to work them out in the flesh which is what we do in the natural order that's not how the kingdom of god comes the kingdom of god doesn't come to you from without so that you can learn it by your senses through your natural intellect and through your ability to work it out in the flesh it comes inside of you is an inward nature your eye has to be single on the lord according on the kingdom of god that's why it's almost impossible to explain with human words that's why paul when paul received the the revelation of the lord he said i did not receive this doctrine from men i did not sit under the apostles and have them teach me all the ways of how to be a follower of christ but the Lord himself appeared to me and everything I received, I received by direct revelation, a direct unveiling of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe when, G when Paul went away for three years, he went back to those scriptures 
that he had been studying since he was a young man. And through a divine revelation, the Lord Jesus himself, through the Holy Spirit, began to unveil to Paul the reality of all of that word, except now it was the same word that he'd been looking at before. Same word. The commandments hadn't changed. The, the, the prophet, what had been written in the prophets, none of it changed. No one gave him new, new things to study. He took that same law that was under the old covenant, except now the veil was taken away. His mind and his eyes were enlightened to behold the glory of the Lord in the face of Jesus Christ, and he was a new creation. There was a new heavens. There was a new earth. There was a whole new world before him. And he received that divine revelation. And then he said, I went up to Jerusalem after that time of being drawn away to have the Lord teach him. And he said, I needed a confirmation to know that all that I'd received was not in vain, that it matched. He needed a witness. And he found the witness in the apostles for the same life and the same interpretation that Christ had given him, they were walking in that same life. And so he said, they didn't add anything to me. You can read this over there in the scripture. I'm not going to look it up right now, but he said, there's nothing that they added to me. There was nothing that they, there was no additional word that they needed to add to me. Everything was a witness of what I'd received. Paul, the apostle had been just like Moses. He'd gone up to the Mount and received the word of God from God through the Holy Ghost. Except he didn't go up a literal Mount Sinai. Hallelujah, he went up Mount Zion. The city of the living God. And we're talking about spiritual realities. I think it's so important today that we're separated unto the Lord. That we hear the voice of the Lord for ourselves. That's the working of God. He wants to be our teacher and allow the Holy Spirit to teach us so I was going to say I make these videos, but not to try to indoctrinate people. We want to see people loosed from the spirit of the world that keeps people in darkness and begin to feel out after the Lord according to the spirit. So Jesus said, he heard that it was said, this is Matthew 5. Uh, he heard that it was said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and shall hate thine enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those cursing you, do good to those hating you, and pray for those accusing you falsely and persecuting you, that you may be the sons of your Father in heaven, because his Son, he doth cause to rise on evil and good, and he doth send rain on righteous and unrighteous. I'm still in the Young's literal translation. But that's why John there could say, he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness. It is the same law. But Jesus was bringing the spirit of the law out now. He was getting past that letter that's cold and dark and bringing the light of the glory of God. It's right in the face of Jesus. That, that we're to love our enemies. That we're to pray for those who despitefully use us. Not as the world. No uh, revenge, not a spirit of venge vengeance in the hearts of God's people. Not trying to repay evil for evil, but a blessing in the face of evil. That cannot be done through the flesh. Not in true reality. It'll only be done by the Spirit as the veil is taken away off of our eyes. And we begin to see and understand the glory of God in the Spirit of God of the Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. Bless you today.